uh, Marlon Thompson. And so can we move into Marlon's presentation? Marlon? Hey, Ivan, thanks. Thanks guys for the introduction. Um, and thank you participants for taking the time to listen to us um, share our insight on um, the Caribbean LGBT situation. So I will be focusing on some of the needs and challenges of gay men in the Caribbean. And my presentation will break down these challenges into three category. First is socioeconomic needs and challenges. The second is health needs and challenges. And the final will be civil and political needs and challenges. So on to the next slide. So on the socioeconomic needs and challenges, the first challenge would be high unemployment levels and lack of livelihood. Um, unemployment is especially high among young gay men in the Caribbean. Um, and this is compounded by homophobic disc um, discrimination, which affects gay man's right to employment. A lot of times employers refuse to employ gay um, persons who um, identify as gay or express, or they think it appears too effeminate. Uh, and so gay men in the Caribbean are affected by that. Um, and one of the things that the global pandemic has highlighted is that um, in the context of the COVID pandemic, a lot of LGBT, uh, LGBT persons find employment in the hospitality industry. And they, in the hospitality, hospitality industry, doing, doing the service level kind of job. So these are the persons who will um, serve you when you go to these resorts and so on. And, because of the pandemic and lack of movement and so on, a number of gay men and LGBT persons have been laid off from their job. And so um, their unemployment situation is exacerbated by the global pandemic situation right now. So we, gay men really need jobs and livelihood. The next point is linked, the next challenge is linked to that and it is high levels of dropout rate and underperformance of schools. So because a lot of times gay persons in gay teenagers, um, they experience a lot of bullying um, in schools. This sometimes forces them to drop out of high school. And those who don't drop out of high school sometimes underperform because of the pressures of the bullying and so on that they face on a daily basis. This makes them less qualified and competitive when compared to their um, heterosexual counterparts. So young gay men, um, one of the things that it's recommended is that they need a second chance program, which would um, allow them to complete secondary education and get the necessary qualifications, which would put them on an equal footing with their heterosexual counterparts. Um, and this, this can be um, through um, technical learning or vocational skills training kind of, kind of learning. It doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional um, educate, form of education. The next socioeconomic needs and challenge of gay men is uh, they tend to have poor life skills. And this is a symptom of um, homophobia and poor parenting. Um, so because of homophobia and other social factors, many gay men sometimes don't benefit from proper parenting. You know, parents are conflicted by their moral obligations over their parental responsibility. Um, the church and what society tells them is right. Uh, and they, as a result, <laughs> they sometimes mistreat these um, teen gay boys, um, which mistreat them physical, um, mistreatment may take the form of verbal harassment, physical violence, and in, in many cases, homelessness for a lot of them. A lot of them are displaced from their home because the, um, the, the lack of proper parenting. 
Um, due to these poor family relations related to the neglect during childhood, many gay men do not have basic life skills that heterosexual peers are taught in the home. So simple, very simple and basic life skills um, are not necessarily taught to them. Savings, you know, just very basic and simple things that heterosexuals would have been exposed to um, through their parental upbringing and so on. Then the next is health challenges. So there are high incidences of HIV prevalence and STI among gay men. So the HIV prevalence rate among gay men and other men who have sex with men in particularly, is particularly high, um, especially in places like Jamaica that has a prevalence of 33.3%, Trinidad that has a prevalence of 32%, Bahamas that have a prevalence of 25% and Haiti. The lower prevalence percentage are still high at 5% in Guyana, 6% in Suriname and Cuba. So those are the low range. Uh -huh. And one of the needs uh, of gay men is comprehensive sexual health services. Um, and this could imp include PrEP. However, only, PrEP is only available in Jamaica, Barbados and the Bahamas. And it's most times only accessible through public health facilities. And many a times gay, gay men have an issue navigating public health spaces because of stigma and discrimination that they experience. So there's a disproportionate mental health burden. Um, studies have already shown that um, particularly young gay men, L LGBT persons are at a higher rate of, um, are, are experience a higher rate of mental health, uh, have men higher health, particularly young gay men experience higher rate of um, mental health issues. Um, but a recent study that was conducted by um, the University of the West Indies that surveyed Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, and Guyana, it showed that there's a disproportionate mental health burden on LGBT population that is further exacerbated by, that is further exacerbated by the COVID-19 COVID <laughs> pandemic. So there's a need for um, LGBT friendly mental health services that, um, you know, cater to, oh, John is back, that addresses those issues. The next one is limited interaction with health services. So healthcare workers, gay men are reluctant to engage with the healthcare sector because of stigma and discrimination that they face. Huh? <laughs> and um, so as a result, most times when they present themselves to, um, to the healthcare system, it's when situations are in a really dire state and that is not good for, um, good for the healthcare sector at all. Um, and particularly when it comes down to anal health, um, healthcare workers, are reluctant to perform anal health screening examination, uh, which is crucial for STI and cancer screening, particularly in gay men. We found that men over, gay men over 40 who are at high risk of prostate and other forms of cancer do not come forward um, for regular screening, um, which facilitates early detection and increases the chances of treatment being effective um, so that's a huge problem that we're having with anal, um, the lack of anal health. The next is the lack of legal recourse for anti-gay discrimination. So 
I'm sure you all are probably, have probably heard about the, the Caribbean when it comes on to discrimination and anti-gay um, action, but very few territories in the region, um, save and except for Barbados and St. Lucia, who have sexual orientation in their anti-discrimination law as a prohibited um, category of, of discrimination. Gay men need legal recourse when they suffer discrimination to their rights to work, health, and social services. And this is especially critical um, to, to stem the, the longstanding culture of um, discrimination around gay, gay men in the Caribbean. Then there's a high prevalence of anti-gay violence. I'm sure many of you would have heard of the New York Times classification of Jamaica as one of the most homophobic places in the Western world. Um, while anti-gay violence is prevalent across the region, um, no independent Caribbean country has hate crime legislation. And we know the importance of hate crime legislation. Laws against hate crime, which include sexual orientation as a prohibited category, can serve to deter, if used effectively, to bring perpetrators of bias violence to justice and heighten their sentences. And heightened sentences should, should be imposed. Then finally, I think I'm working on my timeline. So the institutional drivers of homophobia. Uh, the English-speaking Caribbean inherited a lot of archaic laws which criminalize um, sexual intercourse, um, same-sex relations um, between men and many a times between, in some cases specific to men and in some cases um, very, ge very gender neutral between men and men, women and women. Um, the Bahamas is the only territory whose parliament um, has a repeal, has repealed their laws. Um, these laws are institutional drivers of homophobia and it helps to fuel the culture of violence against gay men in the region. Uh, there has been two successful challenges. There has been two successful challenges, constitutional challenges against um, laws criminalizing same-sex intimacy in Belize and Trinidad. Um, these laws still exist in six other OECS countries, Barbados, Guyana, and Jamaica. Legal challenges are still underway in a couple of these challenge, in a couple of these um, jurisdictions. Um, I think that is where my presentation will end. I'm open for questions, comments, and concerns. Thank you very much, Marlon, for that um, comprehensive um, analysis or, uh, you know, of what's the situation.